the, the last flight from Melbourne was delayed by an hour. Anyway, glad to be here. And uh, again, thanks for joining me for this session. We are talking today about an experience that I started a few good months ago and it evolved uh, uh, in a different flavor. So um, the original title was Building an Emergency Response with a number of uh, technology, Dynamic CRM, SharePoint, uh, Bistalk. Uh, I think there are more guys involved, uh, not just these three. So let's get started and uh, present the agenda for today. So this is the experience that I want to present. There is uh, an emergency event. Um, what happens uh, can be you know, a, a, a fire, can be a, a, an event of natural causes, or as I'm based in Europe, in the last months uh, there have been a bit of uh, situations with uh, uh, terrorist attack like uh, the, the truck in Nice uh, or the bomb in Munich. Uh, and uh, I work for uh, uh, EF Education, it's an organization that runs several schools uh, and uh, one of those schools uh, was uh, exactly in Nice, uh, very, very close to where the event uh, happened. And we were all concerned uh, about the, the, the safety of our staff and our students. So the system in place is basically a way to respond to an event of any nature, not necessarily a terrorist event, obviously, it can be of natural causes, and uh, prepare a kind of a dashboard for staff, for support to respond and uh, safeguard the, the, the security of our uh, students and staff. So the process that I want to um, present today is basically starting from the event, how the dynamic CRM and the SharePoint can communicate to each other, uh, starting from what is the pure sales um, part uh, administration in uh, CRM and creating this dashboard uh, corresponding to the event in the school, in the location where the event occurs. And then obviously track the location of the students uh, and uh, assess their status uh, to verify that they are all safe. Right, so that's for today. We probably have to uh, run uh, quickly through a few slides and jump uh, straight into the demo because I believe it's more exciting, but just 30 seconds about myself. So as I said, uh, I'm coming to you from Europe, uh, more precisely by from a um, teeny tiny country called Switzerland in the mountains. And uh, well, what is good about Switzerland? Let's see, someone will say probably cheese, that's right. Someone would say probably watches, uh, absolutely right. Did someone say the secret bank accounts? That's probably very true, but also chocolate. So the Swiss premium chocolate by Lint is here for the best questions and not only, there are plenty for everybody. And uh, the, the, the bad things is uh, that I live uh, just five minutes in front of the Lint factory. Every morning open the window. Ah dangerous, extremely dangerous. But anyway, and uh, as you can see from the picture, oh, I'm also a former football player for FC Barcelona, or should I say soccer maybe? Not, okay, anyway, let's carry on. Um, let's have a look at the data model first. So how the structure in a dynamic CRM is then uh, uh, Preparing is so all that we have uh, schools, we have students, we have uh, everything that is necessary for the sales part of it. We, we won't focus on the sales automation, obviously, but we'll focus more on the integration between the sales component in CRM with SharePoint using an integration tool that we will see soon. So, I um, don't know if uh, visible enough, but I will. Uh, show this uh, on screen in dynamic CRM uh, in a second. The idea is uh, uh, students attend a school, they are, they are interested to one or more programs, uh, English beginner, English uh, advanced, uh, or any other languages, and uh, they are also accommodated in a host family or in a residence. So that is completely managed in dynamic CRM. As we enter into an event, so when there is an event, 
part of that structure, information that is only relevant for responding to the event, is then, uh, in some way, moved to the dashboard. The dashboard is hosted on a SharePoint online site, and uh, the reason is, uh, is a portal that has to be available uh, to a number of users, uh, mainly staff uh, and uh, support operations that not necessarily fit into the CRM. So we then use a workflow for integrating some information in Dynamics and moving into SharePoint into another part of the data model that you will see on the right side is what probably wrongly we call the roster, which is basically the core of the dashboard where all the students uh, are uh, identified with their status. And then we start tracking their status using the Azure IoT Hub, as we will see in a moment, and manage their communication via voice call, SMS, email, and we are about to introduce also communication of uh, Skype and uh, Facebook Messenger. We'll mention this in a moment. So let's have a look quickly at um, um, Dynamics. So it's here, so to if I'm in line, just want to sign in. So this one obviously is running in a, a virtual machine. Um, but that's where we are. We are pretty much in a, a sales dashboard. I will go quickly over it. Decently visible. Um, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. There we go, probably better. Well, there is a number of programs that are available, a number of schools that are also managed by the, 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 the sales department, and uh, a number of students that I have uh, created during my long flight because you know you know I can't keep on watching the Big Bang Theory over and over again. I have to do something. So I decided to enter a few data here for in this dashboard. Um, and if we, we pick a student, obviously there is some basic information uh, how to reach the student, how to contact the program uh, they are enrolled to, the school uh, of uh, uh, allocation and obviously the accommodation whether they are in a residence or in a host family. Everything is uh, nicely organized uh, into this dashboard uh, or in, into this, this view uh, a few clicks away because you know how these salespeople are. After three clicks they get lost uh, so better to put everything into one slide uh, into one screen only. And that's pretty much uh, the, the the structure, you know, we have uh, these entities uh, here. We worked a bit with custom entities uh, rather than uh, sorry, rather than using the standard one. With uh, so schools, programs, students, accommodation, and they are obviously connected to each other in uh, a one-to-end -one relationship. Uh, these kind of things, uh, but that's pretty much everything about the sales automation. Now. There is an event, what happens? We need to put uh, this uh, information, or at least a part of this information, into the dashboard and uh, have uh, operations and staff access and track the status of our students. So I can take this down for now, because I can run a few virtual machines at the same time on my poor laptop, it will suffer too much, and go into the integration part of it. Okay, so back here. The integration workflow. Now here is where we start getting uh, a bit of uh, the, 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 the interesting part. Um, initially this project started using BizTalk that is a uh, very uh, good uh, tools for integrating applications and uh, especially if they are on-prem and they will have access and you know, also to your CRM uh, database and to your SharePoint and make the co communication happen during the necessary transformation. As we recently moved more 
to the cloud. So it's Dynamics CRM Online and SharePoint Online in Office 365. Uh, we encountered a few limitations, especially in terms of running cost. And uh, we decided to go for the Logic Apps. Logic Apps is a bit of a new model of uh, creating workflow in the cloud, but it's very powerful because uh, uh, you can define entry point for any uh, applications that are supported, obviously, and, uh, and create a bit of a logic with a graphic designer. Now, this is the screenshot, and let me see, because I, uh, I would like to show it live. Let me see if I get the, um, can I get internet access? Ah, the cable, yeah, uh, cable is not good. I'll, um, it, it, the other laptop is connected. Uh, I, okay, I'll try from the other laptop. It's number one, isn't it? Try if I get, get from the other. There we go. All right. All right. Let me do this uh, because it's actually interesting to see that uh, live. Oh, gosh. Also, because there are a few other things uh, I want to show on in here. So just one second that I get connected. So the logic apps, uh, so in the meanwhile, let me get access, uh, we'll see something, is uh, uh, this new workflow Uh, is, uh, I think the, is asking to approve the request. <laughs> uh, okay, this may take uh, waiting for you to approve the request. I have no idea how to approve the request. That's okay. Is there a web file? So then uh, if I, is it the Bosom internet? No. Spam city. Ah, this one is also in. It, it, it's not recognizing the device. Uh, and then he asked me for authorization, but obviously I need to. I mean, that's it? Uh, yeah, yeah, there's no password. Yeah. Okay. Do I have a function? Do you have a function? Yeah, no. All right, I think we're in now, so let me get back to this. Uh, sign in. All right, so Logic Apps is one of the services of uh, Microsoft Azure. It's uh, kind of... Uh, um, workflow automation in the cloud. I've created this one here that uh, has a very nice, a very intuitive uh, a visual builder for connecting different, uh, uh, different applications to each other in, in a proper workflow. So the triggering point is when an event is created. We, we, we will see that in, uh, in SharePoint in a moment, but basically, as I go into my designer, the screen is coming. Yeah. As I go into my designer, basically the workflow is when a new item is created, and I just define uh, the the site URL, this uh, test environment, obviously, the the list uh, where the event uh, is uh, defined, uh, and then uh, the the frequency. I can make it even more quicker. Every minute. Uh, 
check when a new item is created. We'll have a look into SharePoint in a second. Then, then I'll do a condition. When uh, uh, one value is equal, so the value will be when the event uh, start date, here, here we go, is equals to, and, and then here I can say to today. So I'll put uh, some uh, pseudo uh, C sharp code in there. Then uh, I have a condition, do something or do, or if not, uh, do something else. So if, if you do, if it is yes, so if the condition is verified, uh, I can do another action. And here you can see there are a very long, long number of uh, applications that you can connect. Actually, if you click on uh, available APIs, here will show the long list of connectors that are available. So you can integrate any of the application, OneDrive, Outlook, Project, directly from the Logic Apps. What we need here is Dynamics, right? So we say, go into Dynamics CRM and get a list of all the records. And then you continue defining uh, what is uh, your entity, your or organization. I think, uh, let me see if, uh, if we pick, pick up very quickly for the sake of, uh, yeah, there is a strange name, but that's it. And um, then it should come up the list of all the entities defined in that organization. Here we go. Uh, somewhere there should be students. Good news, they are in alphabetical order. And, uh, and as you define this, uh, so basically what's happening here is, uh, say, if the condition is verified, uh, connect to Dynamics, to this organization name, funny name, extract all the records in this entity. I can put more advanced options to say, okay, give me the students that match this school or this uh, location. I can be more sophisticated. And then uh, for each of them, uh, do, uh, uh, create an item in SharePoint. So I'll go back in a second, SharePoint, create an item, and then I say in that SharePoint uh, of before, that obviously is a test instance. There you go, this one works better in SharePoint. In the roster, Then create uh, uh, last name, a first name, in this case, the first two properties, but there can be many uh, of the item, which is the student record. We get into SharePoint in a moment to clarify what's happening. So in, in short, uh, this uh, workflow basically is saying when a new item is created and then when, when this condition is verified, extract all the records from these entities in Dynamics and then put them into a SharePoint list that we have identified. The reason for doing this is, uh, as I mentioned briefly at the beginning, we don't want to operate in Dynamics for the emergency response, but we want to extract some information and put into uh, an application in SharePoint for operating directly in with that. So uh, that is what the Logic Apps do. They connect to, you, you design your workflow, you design your integration points, put a few conditions to extract information and move into uh, from one application to another one, and then they run continuously. We found uh, this uh, uh, very convenient in terms of cost, but also in terms of uh, performance. Um, because by running in Azure, we have uh, the unlimited scalability that the cloud pass can offer over us maintaining an infrastructure with uh, our servers that we have to put in, in load balancing or that we have to scale when there is a, uh, uh, an increase of traffic. This application, the emergency response, is the kind of application that uh, you develop, it must work because obviously there are 
people's life at stake, what you really hope you never use, right? Uh, but when you do have to use it, it has to work uh, properly. So you don't want to deal with situation where some schools uh, uh, have uh, even thousand and thousand. Uh, I think the larger one is in Cambridge. I believe they can accommodate up to 2,000 uh, students. So you know, it, it start getting uh, a important number of uh, uh, of records to manage and to transfer. So you want to make sure that the application performs uh, uh, promptly. All righty. Um, now, in terms of the, the design, just not for me, should I answer? All right, uh, location, one sec. Should I answer? It was on stage. <laughs> All righty. Um, location. Now, if you remember at the beginning, the, the idea was uh, get uh, the, the, some information out of the CRM, put into a dashboard in uh, SharePoint, uh, and track location and uh, status of the students uh, to see if they are all safe. So that happens in SharePoint. So let's run SharePoint and see how the, uh, the looks like. Uh, yes, you need to fill edge right now because it is consumed a lot of memory. One sec, view permission, here we go. Okay, and the uh, the SharePoint portal, again, I'm running into a virtual machine, but now we are operating everything online. Uh, but for the sake of the demo, that is uh, absolutely equivalent. SharePoint is a classical SharePoint theme uh, site uh, where we have defined the other part of the entities that we need uh, in SharePoint, obviously they're called custom list. And we have, uh, is this good enough? Make zoom just a little bit, there we go. Where we have uh, uh, roster, which is uh, the key, the, 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 the core of the entities, uh, the list in SharePoint terminology, connected to a school, students, and then uh, uh, the tracking of the status of the students and the communication that uh, occurs between uh, operators, between uh, support and uh, the student itself, which we'll have a look in a moment. So from an emergency perspective, we say th there is an emergency in, uh, in Cambridge. The school director is informed, uh, receive a call, maybe that was the call, uh, that there is an event, and then th they enter into the form in SharePoint, uh, there is a new event uh, when we start uh, and, uh, and so on. Uh, so just a very, and, and some description, just very quickly to say that the, there is a new event. As we have seen with the logic apps, as soon as a new record in the emergency events uh, list uh, is created, it will trigger the workflow to go to Dynamics, extract the list of students that are in this school and populate the roster and the roster will go into this uh, full screen, so it's slightly better visible, where they say that is uh, something that uh, happened yesterday, apparently, road evacuation in this school uh, in Cambridge, um, the police closed the roads, uh, and all people have been evacuated. A few of the students that were in our sales automation tool in, in CRM, now uh, in the dashboard in SharePoint. So what's happening here? We have uh, some information about these uh, uh, students for in order to contact them directly, phone number and email address, and we also have an indication of the status. Ah, by the way, you're not allowed to take pictures of this because this is real data, sensitive data. I'm being recorded actually, right? Good point. 
No, but I, this is not true. Okay, okay, fine. Um, so, uh, let, let's have a look at this guy, Alexander Miglis, danger. What is the situation here? There has been an exchange of, of SMS from uh, I, Alexander. This is Bob from UF school. Are you okay? Reply yes or no. He said no. And you see, he replied a few minutes after the initial uh, message. Another message immediately after. No answer for a few minutes. And then a call was initiated. But he couldn't reach Alex, so the status is in danger because actually we don't know where he is. Uh, Christine. Christine. Hi, Christine. This is Bob from EF School. Are you okay? Re reply yes or no? Yes. Fine. A few minutes after, one minute after, Christine said yes, she's marked as safe. Let's see Gabor. Gabor, here it is. He wanted to make a conversation, apparently, and then he's been called. So again, there is uh, something happening there. What's happening with Jennifer? Jennifer never replied, so we don't know if she's all right or not. So he's put in status unknown. And... Uh, Let's have a look at Thomas. Thomas is, is an interesting situation, and, and uh, I'll clarify in a moment. There is no answer on yes or no, but his status is still safe for a reason. If you look at the column, last location, now here is a negation of the road uh, in Cambridge, and when uh, it was detected the last time, I don't know if that is visible enough, and apologies for the uh, American format of the date, that depends on the server, but it's uh, 5 p.m. So every hour we have a, a mechanism that uh, ping a device that we give uh, to students and track their location. Sounds creepy, but it's useful. And uh, for all these students has been identified at 5 p.m except I think for one at uh, 1 p.m. So after one, we don't know what happened to, who is this, to Jürgen. And at 5 p.m., Thomas seems to be in good condition. Here it is. Now, why Thomas uh, that doesn't have any reply is marked no, because uh, is marked as uh, safe, actually. Because if you look at this map, uh, let me see if it can see here nicely. Uh, wh where is Thomas? So this is our school. This is where the event occurred. And Thomas is quite far away at 5 p.m. The last time the event was tracked. And the event was uh, around that time. So there has been an assumption that Thomas, by being far away, can be near to the event. So even if he didn't reply, has been marked uh, safe uh, anyway. The other guys instead are a bit closer to the event, and even if they didn't reply, the, uh, we marked them as unknown because uh, uh, exactly we don't know their conditions. So one point about the tracking the location. How do we do that? We do, I need to open PowerPoint that I accidentally keyed. We do it uh, with some devices. Uh, some devices uh, like this little dongle. That you can't possibly see, but this is, I made it bigger on the screen. Uh, and even comes in different colors. Uh, uh, people can choose that. And uh, it costs $5. Every time there is a registration of a new student, uh, we give them dongle. It, uh, on the back, uh, there is a, a slot for a mi mini or micro uh, uh, SIM card. So it's all it will send the signal every hour to the Azure IoT Hub after doing the registration of the device. Each device has a unique number, is assigned to a student, and uh, they bring them with them. But because we know that people try or pretend to forget, we also have uh, mobile apps uh, and even uh, an app uh, just for fun for the Microsoft Band. Who has Microsoft Band anyway? So I don't know. Okay, let me take this off. It's shameful. Um, so by having these uh, little devices, uh, what happens is that uh, 
they send this signal to the Azure IoT Hub. We'll show you in a moment. I think it's still working and tracking information from real devices, so we should see uh, this uh, happening in real time. Uh, the Hub does all this event tracking and then send, uh, well, it doesn't send actually, it exposes an uh, endpoint, which is a RESTful API, for any application to consume it. So basically the process is, uh, from this little device, a signal is sent, uh, sending as simple as uh, the longitude and latitude or the, or, and the device number. By knowing the device number, we obviously know who is the student, uh, unless they exchange the devices, but <laughs> ideally they shouldn't. Uh, by longitude and latitude, um, we know the location on an hourly basis, and then uh, the hub register all this information. Some rules apply, and we will play a bit with the rules uh, uh, shortly, that if uh, there is an event, for example, and the proximity of the person is within, uh, I believe, uh, 100 meters, then uh, we send uh, an alert. Or otherwise, uh, as we have identified before with the case of uh, Thomas, uh, we mark as a safe. So the idea here is to introduce a bit of automation in this process, because the dashboard that was on the screen uh, before listed, I think, five or six uh, students. But the reality is that uh, some schools really have uh, hundreds, you know, even thousands of students. And going through all of them uh, as quickly as possible will require some time. So we have introduced a bit of automation using the location tracking and something else that I will tell you in a moment to identify uh, or assess uh, to the best knowledge of, of possible the status of the, uh, uh, the position of, of students. Now, the good thing is uh, because of these uh, devices are nice and funny in different colors, uh, they can choose them and say, yeah, I want the pink one, I want the yellow, I want the red one. And they keep on forgetting all the time. Or sometimes uh, they say, oh, I lost it. And a few months after, beep, 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 in Sweden. What, the, what happened? So, you know, so now we're trying to think about the next evolution, which will be to inject a GPS into the skin. What happened, okay? Uh, I'm not gonna get out of this room safely. All righty. So this is one point. Uh, what's happening here with, uh, um, with Thomas and company? Because uh, they are in trouble, right? So if we go back to our hub, the location hub, which is basically our client application based on uh, the Azure IoT, I need to show the IoT anyway. Uh, now we are tracking all the students where they are uh, according to the last time we identified the location. And if we scroll down, we have all the devices that we have assigned to which student and a rule. There is only one rule, we can create additional rules. The idea of the rule is, uh, if there is, if the proximity, so we basically do, um, we use the Bing Maps, or the Bing API, Bing Maps API, for uh, identifying the location of the person uh, in a radius of 100 meters from the uh, location of the event. If they are within the rule, then we send an action. The action is something that we need to code, so it requires some coding skills, and install into the hub to process. So if we were to change the rule, we basically say if it is more, if it is, uh, uh, more than a, a thousand meters, it's gone so far away, and we, we, we call it back, no? something like this. Or there, there is another rule, which is the heartbeat. The heartbeat can say if the heartbeat is uh, uh, less than uh, less than one per minute, it, it means that the device uh, is not sending a signal any longer. So it may malfunctioning or may be dead or just lost or whatever. Uh, so that's for the 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 rule itself that can be changed. The action that can be executed is something that you need to code in Visual Studio, C Sharp, then install it, and then it will be executed when the rule is, uh, uh, is uh, met. Um, now, this 
things that you are seeing on the screen uh, is uh, our own uh, dashboard uh, and very, very uh, simple interface because just for the sake of uh, demoing. But on the Azure IoT suite, uh, there is a nice uh, and decorated graphically uh, dashboard uh, kindly offered by Microsoft for applying all these rules. We still need to do all the coding uh, for the actions anyway, so that doesn't escape. So for example, let's go back to and pick one case. Let's see who is closer to the event. So the, the event happened here, and Gabo is uh, somewhere around, but probably his status was uh, safe because here is, uh, you know, is displayed in green. Uh, but the rules is uh, if it is within 100 meters, uh, it should say danger alert. So if I change its uh, location, now in this case, uh, I'm simulating uh, the device. Uh, so let's say that uh, I, I get him closer. Here it is, you see Gabor getting a bit closer to the event. Uh, and now because the rule uh, has been uh, met uh, or violated, then uh, his uh, status has been highlighted as amber because it is close within 100 meters of uh, the, the, the event. So uh, this, is, uh, this will reflect uh, on, the, on, on, on the dashboard for the status of Thomas. Thomas was a bit far away, and then even if he didn't reply, we said, okay, good enough for us, you're all right. Any of these uh, little automation help uh, to assess an initial status, but we follow up with all of them individually by trying to call and speaking to the people directly, uh, because obviously, you know, uh, safety is paramount uh, and uh, we can't just trust the Bing Maps API, uh, my goodness. Alrighty, so that is one aspect of the automation that, that we do. The other one is uh, uh, ass assessment of the status based on the communication, on the messaging. And that happens using a bot. This is a bit of a experiment in some way that we are, uh, we, we are trialing at the moment. But, and we are doing with um, um, SMS for now. We want to extend it to, to messages of a Skype, of a Facebook Messenger, and um, I had a conversation with the guys from Facebook a few weeks ago. They said uh, that WhatsApp uh, is not programmable at the moment. So there is no API to, to talk to WhatsApp directly. And it's a bit of a shame because a lot of our students use WhatsApp, but there is no way to talk to WhatsApp programmatically. So we'll focus on Skype and Messenger for now. Uh, one of the, uh, the, the the next steps we want to implement is also trying to introduce a bot that talks the language of the student because yes, they are going to learn uh, English. Uh, uh, this is what EF does mainly, the English courses. But you know, you want to be sure that they actually understand the message. So for this reason, we uh, develop a bot that is super, super simple and uh, he asks for questions where the answer is either yes or no. So not to make it over complicated. So if we go back to the dashboard again, you will notice something funny here. The, fir the very first message that uh, happens uh, immediately, uh, uh, that happens uh, imme immediately after the event uh, is created in the dashboard is uh, Hi, name of the person. This is Bob from EF School. Are you okay? Reply yes or no. Hi, Christine. This is Bob. Are you okay? Yes or no. Hi, Gabo. This is Bob. Are you okay? Yes or no. So there is actually no Bob in EF that type this message. That's the bot. And shame of us, we call the bot Bob. But we, we had to come up with a name. Uh, so the very first message is actually a bot that send a, an SMS to the phone number of the, of the student asking for yes or no. 
if they reply yes, it's the status is marked uh, as safe uh, immediately. If they don't, obviously, as in the case of Alex, Alexander, we mark the status as in danger, and then there is a, a second message that is sent. So I think we have only three, uh, three or four uh, messages that are sent in sequence, and they all ask an escalation of questions depending on the answer given before. So it's not, Bob is not extremely clever. He just asks, are you okay? Yes or no? And then, uh, do you know where are you now? Yes or no? Uh, and then uh, some other questions. So we're using the bot framework uh, that is still a bit in preview. It's not fully, uh, you know, fully, fully robust, uh, and, uh, but it's, it's still uh, an interesting way of automating some messages. So the way it works, uh, I will show you now in uh, Visual Studio. So we put a bit of code here in the demo. It never hurts. Um, it's relatively simple because Bob is, is a simple guy. If you get to be more sophisticated, obviously, you know, you, can, you go more into the, the, the field of artificial intelligence. But we're not that uh, intelligent for now. So we keep it relatively simple. Now, bot framework, you say, oh gosh, developing a bot framework must be so difficult. Well, it's not, because in Visual Studio, if you just go add new project, there you go, and go into Visual C Sharp, and you scroll, scroll down, passing all these boring gray icons, suddenly you find a nice shining blue about application. Now, not every Visual Studio has that, uh, you need to install a package fr from uh, NuGet, but, uh, no, from NuGet, from, uh, from the botframework.com website, and then you have it in Visual Studio. But that is a template. And you say, wow, I have a template to create my framework. What does it do? It creates this nice application that is uh, a simple web API. So a bot framework is uh, nothing else than a RESTful web service with uh, HTTP verbs to respond uh, to the request. More specifically, the post message. So if you go here, zoom in a little bit, if you can see, my bot app is a controller of API controller. If anybody has done web API, you will recognize the API controller being a controller of the web API. So my bot is actually a API, web API controller, which exposes a post verb that accepts an input and activity. Any communication that happens between a bot and a person is an activity. An activity is made of a conversation, which contains the message itself, and uh, a user state, which uh, brings information about the, uh, the identity of the user. Bots need authentication, so you need to register the bot uh, into the um, botframework.com website. Microsoft would like also to publish the bot and make it available in directory for other organizations to use it, but you don't have to. As you create your bot, you get, uh, um, actually you define an endpoint uh, that where the bot is uh, visible. If you publish it, it becomes visible in the directory and other organizations can reuse it. If you develop a bot that you know is generic purpose, that uh, it can be used for uh, ordering pizza automatically, then uh, you want to resell it uh, uh, or expose uh, publicly into the directory. Otherwise, our bot is not public, it's all internal, and, uh, but we still use the framework for, uh, for making available. So if the activity is a message, create a connection. If the activity comes from uh, the school, which is identified by the message uh, bot, uh, send the next message. Otherwise, uh, if it's coming from the student, read the response of the, of the students and understand what to do on the status of the students himself, whether yes or not. Uh, the way the send next message works is very simple. Get the student ID 
from uh, the state client. So basically, each message conveys a state. The state uh, is, uh, brings information about which student uh, is uh, this message about, because obviously we need to communicate with a relevant student, and then uh, reply to the student. The way the reply is built uh, is uh, relatively simple to, to build. You just create a class, uh, you can call it any way you want, I just call it reply, and then define, define a number of uh, reply options. Again, you can call it any way you want, but basically these are our three sentences. Uh, so only three steps. First step, uh, hi, placeholder. This is Bob, are you okay? Reply yes or not. So the expected answer is identified by the return value of the message, of the property, and the message to send to the person, to, to, to the student in our case, is an attribute prompt. These are our three messages, and you, you can see they're all return, they all accept a, a response of type yes and no, because uh, this is how we have defined yes and no. Actually, these terms uh, with offers an alternative. If they say okay, it also means yes. So here you can type uh, a list of uh, yup, okie dokie, blah, 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 so all the possible alternatives to yes. So this is just a way to build your vocabulary. If I had a different type of uh, reply, I would build another enum. So I would say something like uh, enum uh, another reply options. Uh, options. And then it would build the, the options that I, I accept as a reply. And then uh, my message will have as a return value this other enum with all the possible replies. So building the, the sequence uh, of uh, sentences and responses is not complex. Uh, once you get, it's just a different model uh, of uh, developing this, uh, uh, the bot, that you just have to put into the, using these attributes this during this uh, structure, and then the bot framework will take care of it. All right. And then obviously we, said we, we register the, the bot, uh, identify the channels of communication. We, we, the, the we're using SMS, uh, but there is a provider that are already available by Twilio. Uh, because we are not using Twilio, uh, we're using some other local provider for sending SMS. The, the, the alternative is to use a, a direct line. A direct line is basically call any web service over HTTP. Because uh, uh, the integration with Twilio will require a Twilio account, uh, and Twilio is a provider of SMS, uh, the only alternative that we could find for sending SMS through our SMS provider is calling their own web service. The, the way a bot calls a web service is what they identified as a direct line, so you call directly the web service. Skype, we are, uh, experimenting a bit, and web chat, uh, we don't really do web chat uh, because you know, when there is an emergency, you don't really want to go on a website and chat with a student, but we use it a bit for testing, uh, just to, to, to simulate the, if, the, the, if Bob re really understands what I'm saying. So to make an example of what I'm saying, let's go here and see Alex, okay? So Alex is in danger and say, hey, I couldn't reach Alex. Now, let's send another message, but this time the message, we send it uh, as an, an operator, so it actually comes from the school itself. And say, hey, Alexander, can you please uh, tell, him, tell me if you are okay? It is really important. Reply yes or no. And now I send the message. Okay, message sender sent. Uh, Alex will receive uh, on his mobile no phone uh, and he has to respond. So now I have uh, that web chat here. 
which is a simulator of the mobile phone. No? So this is uh, Alex now. Alex wants to send an, an SMS. This is just my own simulation. I say, yes, I'm all good. As he send yes, let me refresh the page. Here it is. First of all, yes, I'm all good comes here in uh, the list of communication that have been sent uh, to Alex uh, and his status turned to, to yes because yes is uh, the recognized reply to turn status into sales. So by, and this has happened as uh, uh, an automatic process of communication. In this case, we have initiated the communication I type directly. So that was like an operator or someone in, in the school typing the message in this window here. Uh, but otherwise, the bot will be able to have the communication uh, itself. The bot, however, stops if it doesn't receive an answer because uh, it means that the student doesn't re is not reachable and then uh, there is no point of keeping the bot uh, doing the communication. Then we move into a call, typically. So we will try to, to, to escalate it. But again, this form of automation helps uh, to at least uh, not to verify the majority or a good part of the cases in an automatic way and then move uh, to manual calls for the remaining one. So I think uh, actually that's it because um, briefly the way the, the, the workflow that I described, the message go to the bot is a post, the bot controller is a web API as we said, if it's coming from the, stud from the school, uh, we go into the list of the three messages that we have uh, 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 prepared uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in the application, in the bot controller, and then send the message in sequence. Because uh, we, uh, we know the student from the user state, so that is important. No? So the activity contains the conversation, which is the message itself uh, and the reply, and the user state. From the user state, we know who is the student, and then we know that we have already sent message one, then we need to send message two. We have sent message, message two, so we have to send message three. And then we go back and send the other message. If instead the message is from the student, there is a passing of the message. If he reads yes or no at the beginning, or the alternative is okay, then we'll assess the status as we have briefly seen uh, in the example before. By replying yes, the status turned into green, into safe, uh, because the bot has recognized yes as an acceptable answer. Right, end of the workflow. We started with the event. Briefly in Dynamics, uh, the, our sales dashboard extracted the information using logic apps and we put into the dashboard in SharePoint. The, sh the dash dashboard is accessible by schools, uh, operators, uh, and support. Uh, actually also by salespeople that they want to inform uh, maybe the, the uh, students' parents or families. So it, it is a dashboard that is more accessible than the CRM itself. And then we have tracked the location and uh, assess the status using some form of automation uh, in terms of uh, the GPS uh, devices or the, or the bot. But everything helps, but is not the final way to assess status, especially in situations where you know, there are people's lives at stake. It's only a way to say, uh, well, out of hundreds of thousands of students, these, we believe, uh, they are safe because they were away from the event uh, or because they replied they are okay. But we always reach by phone later. So that brings us to the end uh, of uh, this session. I'm so glad we managed to do it. Uh, don't forget to evaluate the session for your chance to win a Surface Pro 4 or a brand new Xbox One S. Thanks for attending, questions and uh, chocolate. Yes, um, good question. The logic apps at the moment are not very robust on that.
Um, there is a log in the logic apps as, uh, as on, uh, in, uh, in the Azure portal, uh, but it, it requires some manual intervention. As uh, you, as uh, the operator, as the administrator, has to log in into the portal and have a look into the log. Logic apps are a, a bit new. Well, they are new, not bit. They are new. So it means that uh, they're not extremely mature uh, on all uh, the things that, uh, for instance, BizTalk can offer in terms of uh, monitoring uh, and in terms of uh, tracing uh, messages. Uh, but I believe uh, that Microsoft uh, will progress in that direction. So good point. Uh, there is no log. Well, there is logging, but the, you can see the logs only on screen. The, you, you can't automate anything. Alrighty, so thanks again. Please come because they, the chocolate came from a long way and they deserve to be consumed. I will be the first one. And um, any questions, I'll be around. I'm actually having another session tomorrow morning about something else about scalability of application in Azure. If you're interested, more than welcome. There will be some more chocolate. And uh, thanks again.